And the president gave the order for us to line up in single file. India. To get rid of anything compromising. And to go out one by one. And he said that he would go last. We put down our weapons. I was first up to leave and a doctor passed me his white coat and I made a white flag with a burnt stick and held it out the door. But a tank at the corner opened fire and the bullets ricocheted next to the door. So I said, I'm going to be the last out of here, not the first. By this time, the first soldiers had broken into the palace and were searching for the few members of Allende's guard who had yet to surrender. I bumped right into them. They were coming up and I was going down because I didn't realize that the first floor had fallen into their hands. Those on the second floor had yet to be captured. Dr. Patricio Gijón was looking for President Allende who had slipped away from the group. There was an open door that hadn't been open a while before. I could see the light coming through it. I leaned in and looked inside and there was a big armchair. And the president, just as he was sitting down it seemed to me, shot himself with the machine gun and his head exploded. I went over to him and although there was really no point, I took his pulse. It was a doctor's reflex and obviously the president was dead. We were completely alone in the room, just me and the president. I was paying my respects. I'd never had the opportunity when he was alive, so I was doing it now that he was dead. Resistance inside La Moneda was now at an end. The prisoners were forced out into the street where firing continued between soldiers and the snipers in the Ministry of Public Works. We never stopped firing. And then suddenly we saw the door to La Moneda open and people started coming out. We couldn't see the president. We could make out the faces of some of our comrades, but we couldn't see the president. The soldiers took us out and put us against the wall with our hands up, and they hid behind us and began to fire at the Ministry of Public Works, using us as human shields. Then they crossed us over to the other side of the street where they lay us down. They left us lying down and started beating us again. They walked all over us and shot machine gun bursts over our heads. They threatened us with a tank tank advanced and came right up to us, then it stopped and pulled back a little. As we were lying there on the ground, the tank commander asked his general for permission to run the tank over our heads. Captain, let me squash these bastards. At least he's going to be quick, I thought, because a tank going over my head, it'll be quick. I was sad to be dying like this. I'd rather have died on my feet, fighting. 
Up on the sixth floor of the Ministry of Public Works, confusion reigned. The soldiers shouted at us to stop firing or they'd drive the tank over them. But we couldn't hear that much up there. A salvo of shots came from the fifth or sixth floor of the ministry and hit the turret of the tank, hit the tank, but missed the commander. He turned the big machine gun round, a 50 millimeter, and fired up at the ministry windows. That's the last image I have of the defense of Lamaneda, because after that, there were no more shots. There was no more resistance. Not far from La Moneda, Allende's daughters, fearing they would be recognized, tried to make their escape from the city center. We left walking in the opposite direction to La Moneda, towards Santa Lucia, and there we decided to hitch. And luckily, this large car came along and stopped and we pretended to be secretaries. We said we were frightened and wanted to get out of there and asked if he could take us away from the center. The car headed out of town in the direction of the Plaza Italia. Here the military was out in force and had set up a major checkpoint. It was the first time we'd seen soldiers in the process of detaining people, and that really made an impression on me. We saw several people who were walking with their hands, like this, and soldiers pointing at them with rifles, and people were being arrested. And then a patrol approached us and asked the driver for his documents. So my sister, Beatrice, who was heavily pregnant, bent over and started to fake contractions. And the soldier called over to his officer and said, Captain, there's a pregnant woman. And the reply came back, OK, let them pass. And we left. Back at La Moneda, the palace was still ablaze, and those captured remained in the street waiting to be taken away. The firemen arrived and parked their trucks, and they started to get out their equipment, pulling their hoses and everything over our bodies. We were still lying there with our hands behind our necks, and suddenly one of the firemen came over to me, and he hit me, and he said, these Marxists were firing against our soldiers, and he began to stamp on my head. Firemen are generally from the upper classes here in Chile. And they were very political back then, and that guy, and probably the majority of them, were against the government. But that doesn't excuse him kicking me when I was down. The prisoners were finally loaded onto trucks and taken away for interrogation. The scene inside La Moneda was one of complete devastation. One battle was over, but a more subtle offensive was just beginning.
de pistola de ametralladora. Pero es real, parece que es realmente es impresionante. Es impresionante. ¿eh? The military were quick to understand the publicity value of these weapons to justify the ferocity of their coup. But upstairs in the palace was a potential public relations disaster. The discovery of the ex-president's dead body caused the junta and Federico Willoughby real concern. Of course, immediately, everybody would have the same reaction. Suicide or not, it was something from the public opinion point of view, very serious because nobody would believe at that time that he was a suicide. You know, he was going to be blamed as a killing. I was afraid that a myth could be born. And myths are very dangerous in politics and history too. 